What's up, guys? It's William from Negro right on me. And today we got a little, another video for you guys. We're going to be talking about the Afghan and Haitian comparison. As within the last month, there was a lot of Afghans and Haitian refugees. But both of these refugees, even though they're governed by the same law in America, are getting two different types of treatment. This is what's going on. I'm sure you guys are paying attention to the news, but if not, I'll give you uh, a little rundown of what's going on and my analysis of why these two different subgroups of refugees who are coming into America are getting two different types of treatment. You see, why are we flying all of these Afghans into America, but yet we're flying out all these Haitians back to Haiti? Which is a good question because they're both trying to uh, seek asylum as refugees. So why are they both getting two different results? One one black, the result for a, a group that is mostly black, and then another result for groups that are almost near white. As you can see in the recent videos, you can even see some of the rangers, you know, with their whips, and they're chasing Ow! after the, these uh, Haitians out from the Mexico border. These rangers are going around with their whips and chasing these Haitians. It almost looked like a slavery again, where they're out there with the whips and chasing these Ow! Haitians back across the Mexico border to run them out of um, the refugee camps. But then you're flying in all the Afghans and welcoming them into America with open arms. You know, you provide them food, water, and shelter, and visa processing, but you're not doing the same for the Haitians. Now, you see, the Biden administration, what they do every time when there's an election, these Democrats will come to the black neighborhood, black community, black organizations, and always try to secure the black vote with very little promise. And you'll see time again that when it comes to black issues, that they're with, they're with the black people during election time, and as soon as the election is over, they push black people off the tour bus and say, we're in, we don't need y'all anymore. And you can see an example here, Haitians are mostly black and how they are treated compared to the Afghans. So we, we have here that, you know, black people are always getting their vote secured by the Democrats, but the Democrats never want to do things for black people and sometimes they make it even worse by trying to do the complete opposite and not trying to follow their own laws, refugee laws. So the only way they need our votes because it's a swing vote so you can secure your spot into the White House because it makes up at least 15% of the population. If you can get them all to vote for one party, then that makes that increases the chances that you'll be in the White House. So they only do enough pandering boot licking, butt licking, bus dancing, shuffling, shaking, and jiving at the church for the black vote, and that's all they need to do. But when people like Ice Cube, or people like Puff Daddy, or people like uh, other entertainers, 50 Cent, when they ask Biden and the Black Democratic Party, what are they going to do for black people? They tell them, oh, we're not going to talk to you right now. We'll talk to you after the election. Okay, so now they've won. They're in the, they're in the White House. So why, why are they getting these different type of treatments? Even though they're not Americans, we can see the, the examples. See, they don't even feel sorry for our Haitian brother. So a lot of people say that, oh, you know, they came in as an influx. There's too many of them coming all at one time. Okay. Well, 50,000 Afghans were flown into America, while only 15 thousand one five Haitians are right at the Mexican border waiting for them waiting for Haitians to come into America so 50 five zero fifty thousand Afghans were properly where they said that they were vetted they're already pre-screened and they're ready to come into America but for Haitians which is only three times less the number of 15,000 Haitians and they're not and they're not trying to vet them or screen them or try to bring them into America, but yet you're having the Rangers out there to chase them away from the border with whips. So it has nothing to do with how much people came in because there were more Afghans coming in than Haitians and they had enough time to, to properly vet and screen 
all of those Afghans three times more the number. And I also disagree that they were even properly vetted and screened as they would say to use as a, they're trying to use as an excuse to say that, you know, the Haitians are coming into the border were not screened and they were not vetted, but the Afghans were vetted. But when you look at the videos a month ago and you see the Afghans hopping onto the plane, cramming into the plane, some of them were even hanging off the plane when the plane was taking flight, a lot of them fell off the plane. It doesn't look to me that all those people that got on the plane that rushed in, I, I didn't see any of them really being vetted or screened before getting onto the plane. It looks like all of them were just rushing to the airport and just trying to get in. So, but then when you see the Haitians, they're all sitting there along the border. They're, they're not making any movement. They're just waiting for the government to come and screen them. They, they are waiting there, waiting to be properly screened. And then they would have the time to sit down and screen each person because they're all located in one spot. But then when you're telling me in the video that they're all properly screened and vetted, but they're all running into the airplane, cramming into the airplane, someone are hanging off the airplane. It's hard for me to believe that, that they were properly vetted before getting onto the airplane. They, they like to use a lot of fancy language to, to get around things that they've done wrong. See, this example, you know, within two co communities coming within almost the same time, shows you the double standard that Americans have for refugees and also uh, immigrants that are trying to come into America. See, they, they like to blacklist a lot of American countries or countries with a lot of black people applying for immigration, but make it a lot easier for countries that don't have a large black population. It would be hard for me to see, you know, a large group of Europeans waiting at the internment camp, waiting on the Mexican border for Americans to be, to bring them into America. That, that, I, that would never happen. That they would just let them wait, let them wait outside or even chase them back to Europe. That, that's, that would never happen. There's a double standard. The reason why that they want to give the Afghan this royal treatment is because America still wants to have one foot in Afghanistan. They know that there's a lot of resources still in Afghanistan and they still want to keep one foot in Afghanistan. And they also don't want to admit that they, that they were defeated. So they're hoping that later on that they can, if they need to, you know, plan an attack that they can, that they always have Afghanistan and a large population of Afghanistan will be helping them to get back to Afghanistan and to help them win the war and, and overtake the country. So they still have interest in Afghanistan. While in Haiti, America doesn't really have any interest in Haiti. They don't see any resources in there that really Americans would like to harness. So that's why they're not really paying attention to the people in Haiti. But you see where, you know, one law applies to one, but it doesn't apply to other. You see on a large grand scale now. And I know a lot of y'all Democrats want to blame Trump for some of these immigration rules. But Trump is not in the White House right now. So why are we talking about Trump? We're always trying to blame Trump for this and, and that. And he's not even in the White House. And Democrats are still trying to blame Trump for, for this. And he's, he's not even in the White House. So we need to just stop that also. We need the Democrats. They, they need to take responsibility and they 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 if it was that important for them what they would do is that they would stop the exportation of the people from Haiti and provide them the same thing that they provide the Afghanistan by doing the screening you know doing the vetting and if they pass through all the screening vetting, then let them into America just like how you did the people from Afghanistan you did it for a larger population of 50k Afghanistan but you wouldn't do it for 15k uh, Haitian three times less So brothers you see that's why a lot of times people believe that Democrats are, are hypocrites when it comes to black issues and dealing with black problems and even international when it comes to other countries that have a large black population But none of these Democrats want to hold them You know responsible nobody wants to point it out 
But then when it's Trump and the Republicans, then all of them jump in the bandwagon and want to come after him. But I don't remember this type of story really happening with him other than when they had the ICE and they had the refugee campus, but they still had a place for them to stay while they were going through the screening and vetting. So guys, what do you think? Who are you from YouTube? You can like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye.